You are listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blytho, and my regular weekly guests. And we are all here to share the research, the science, and the strategies, as well as some of the fun, to help you to create a more active life. Hello and welcome to Creating Active Lives. We have a slightly different format for you this week because I'm talking to Teresa Wheatley from FitPro. She will explain all about FitPro in a moment. And one of the reasons we're talking is to really highlight the importance of continuing professional development for the fitness industry. And this isn't just important for us instructors. It's also really important that our clients know that we have an ongoing commitment to making sure that we're up to date, that we know what's what, and that we're, we're on top of whatever the new information is in the industry. So, Teresa, thank you for joining me. And tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and actually what FitPro is as well, because there may be people out there that aren't familiar with it. Well, first of all, absolute pleasure to be invited along, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah's actually um, come along and chatted to me when I've been hosting. So I, it's my turn to be on the other side. So I get to our, answer all the questions. So first of all, you sort of said for me to introduce myself and FitPro. I think the key thing is why I will, ev- I will always turn up to things like this, Sarah, is my passion for raising the standards of the industry. And I know that that's something that's really firmly embedded in your heart as well. So um, that's why I'm still in the industry. I'm in- incredibly passionate about it. And I get to do that in the role that I do right now. So I work for FitPro. If you've not heard of FitPro, we've been around for over 30 years and been really instrumental in, in shaping the, the format of the industry in the UK. Um, we've held many events, many educations. We have many brands as part of our whole suite of things. But I think the key things that we're known for is supporting um, and inspiring and educating our, our industry that we love whilst also providing amazing insurance and education. And I know that's what you want to talk a little yeah. bit about, about education and how important it is. And I guess the thing that I want to shout loud and proud about is that I get to do something that is so incredibly important. I get to um, talk about, um, we've got over 82 um, courses going on and and developing loads as we speak, which is very exciting. And this is, I mean, again, you know, we've talked about this a lot in the past. I'm absolutely passionate about standards because I find that as an industry, it's, you know, I mean, yeah, anatomy and physiology is anatomy and physiology. You know, the bones of the body, the muscles of the body don't change. But actually, what does change is how we apply that knowledge. And not just just to movement generally, but also to different populations. Because it's it's there's so much more evidence coming through in just general activity, isn't there? And But also within the more specialist fields like yeah. older adults, menopause, Um, some of the long-term conditions even some of the what we've always thought of as acute conditions like cancer which is now becoming more of a long-term condition because of successful treatment there's so much evidence and so much more research being done that actually to do a course and then think well I've done my course now that's it I can just go on and forever it's not enough is it It's not. And you know what? Our industry, thank goodness, does not stand still. And neither should we. And, you know, we we give out so much to our clients, our classes, and we need to be inspired. We need to be informed. And so, you know, rocking up and and doing education is is essential to be able to do that, um, to do that work and keep on giving and to really feel that you're at the front of the game. You know, I mean, of course, our basic qualification sets us up, but we have to keep on building on from there. And, you know, there's there's only one way we do that, and that's ongoing education and choosing ongoing education from, you know, people who are right at the front of the industry, who are right on top of the research, who are the movers and shakers, groovers, whatever you want to say about our industry. And, you know, I'm really excited about that because I get to speak to those people. I know you do too, who are, you know, and the beauty of it as well, Sarah, is even as an educator and having been in the industry for 30 years, I'm still learning. I don't stand still, you know, and it's, 
oh my gosh, it's so refreshing, you know? And like I heard you say about long-term conditions and stuff, when we started out, we would have been told that you don't work with people with cancer, you don't work with older adults, da, 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 da. And and we would be limited. And let's not forget the client, therefore, is being limited. And I, I love the fact that we can educate people, inspire people, inform people with the latest research to help more people move. You know, life is not, we're not, we're not, you know, um, fit healthy people all the time you know our lives change and how lovely to be able to work with a huge demographic so yeah i'm i'm so glad we're we're you know on the same page on that absolutely it's so important isn't it because i think you know in the, i mean like you i've been in the industry for for over 30 years now and you, there's been so many changes but one of the things that you know i love is that there's so much more evidence there's so much more research going on which means yes. we can include so many more people in activity yeah. but it's it's a lot of the courses are initially focused as they should be initially focused on working with the apparently healthy adult yes. with no real issues but we know that actually that isn't the majority of the population. The majority of the population have different things, which is where I think once you've got the basics, it's so important to then yeah. to then know how to work with different people. It's a bit like servicing a boiler, isn't it? You learn by this is how a boiler works and how you service it. Then you start learning what to do when it goes wrong. So again, it's it's yeah. know the basics, but then start to learn about the things that really interest you. Whichever Absolutely. field it is, it could be long term conditions, older adults, as I say, it could be people with a disability. There are so many different fields now, and we're so lucky that there's so much more research coming through, um, not just into Absolutely. actual activity, but into what stops people and what motivates mm-hmm. them. So it's not just about the, the physical get out there and do it, it's about what's going on up in our minds as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what I was saying earlier about us being inspired and stuff, you know, we have a lot of people who are fitness professionals who are studying the format because it speaks to them themselves. For example, you know, it may be that they have had a a cancer diagnosis or they may be perimenopausal. What then happens is often they'll do it for themselves and then they'll think, actually, this is the client group I want to work with. So not only are we providing, you know, so yes, you can work with those clients, but also informing the person themselves or it might be a family member or whatever and I think that's so exciting that you know one of the things that we also do and that's why we've had you on as as a webcast um, guest is we give out a lot of free content as well so we speak to people who are educating you know so it's not just buying um, air courses there is free content free webinars and stuff and I think that's really really important it's not you know, we want to share the love and share the breadth of, uh, you know, educators and um, people that we work with. I mean, it's what I found in working with FitPro, and even though I've been in the industry for over 30 years, I've been in this role for uh, about two and a half years. Before that, I was a, an educator, an assessor, and, and in, in internal quality assurance part, uh, on top of some other stuff. But what I've, what I've found is actually FitPro have, diversified even more we're getting to have tougher conversations with people getting on you know um, guests to really dispel a whole load of myths um, to 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 help our amazing fitness professionals realize that they can reach so many more people you know in areas that they thought maybe they wouldn't didn't know that they could work in or venture into it's so exciting it is isn't it it's it's so important because people who want to get fit will find a way of doing it they'll come to the gym they'll go to the classes they'll trot along to the leisure center they'll they'll go out for a run but actually what we're finding now and I know we've talked about this is that there's a lot of people out there who don't know the benefits of becoming more active, who are, who are scared, who think they're going to get injured, who've had a negative experience in the past. And this is where, you know, as, as professionals, our role isn't mm-hmm. just to help fit people get fitter. It's actually to work with the, the sedentary, the inactive populations, the people who maybe have a long-term condition and aren't sure what to do. So we're not necessarily looking at getting people fitter. We're just looking at getting people moving. And that, Absolutely. It's such oh, an Sarah, important role, isn't it? More. 
Yeah. Um, you know, whereas you're saying that really resonates with me, one size does not fit all. And we know that as fitness professionals, my goodness, if we delivered the same thing each time to, you know, a different person, we'd get bored as anything. <laughs> But And it's a real disservice to our clients. So I know that true fitness professionals have a passion for the industry, know that we have to do more than that. And I hear you talking about the sedentary, um, you know, side of things. We are still not doing enough as fitness professionals no. to engage the sedentary audience. We, do, we, You know, we're really successful in so many areas, but we have not engaged enough with the sedentary audience. In fact, I will sort of signpost a really great course by Dr. Paul Batman that we have on our platform. Mm. It's called Every Movement Counts. And it's actually about how can a fitness professional not just make the fitter fitter, but actually really engage with a sedentary audience? Because actually, like you say, if they're scared, they don't think it's going to work. They just, they don't, we, as fitness professionals, we assume everybody knows the benefits. Well, do you know what? That's just not the case. And actually, it may be something like they suddenly have a diagnosis of something or they feel, you know, suddenly some, a life changing event, which means they realize they now have to exercise. Something didn't didn't get across to them beforehand. And it may be as a fitness professional, we are doing that one size fits all. But everybody loves exercise and everybody, you know, has got this sort of base base sort of limit of, of stuff but we but that's just not the case the stats are showing it very much so so yeah just so i'm posting one great course every movement counts it's with dr paul batman who and he's wow for research you've got a ton there in that course yeah it's but this is where you know this is one of the reasons you know this podcast is about creating active lives because for a lot of people the gym mm -hmm. um structured or more formal exercise is a progression Yes. not where they're starting they may be starting with a five minute walk around the block they may be starting with three stretches they might be starting with three press-ups against the wall we need to be starting where our clients are and this is something that I think again a lot of people a lot of fitness professionals are so used to working with people who are already reasonably fit um, that they forget that for some people it they do not have even a good functional level of activity yeah. never mind a fit a fitness level if you like and this is where I, I just think you know, as instructors we need to go right back and think okay what if the client can't do three sit to stands what if they struggle to get out of a chair and I'm asking them to do 10 squats it's not yes. going to happen we need to be we need to be providing a lot more very 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 simple advice with just just walk for 10 minutes just walk for two minutes mm -hmm. Just stand up mm. a little bit more. You know, we need to be really thinking about how we can ease people into activity before we start thinking about an hour in the gym or a 45 minute class, because a lot of people know that they can't manage that and they go away thinking, I can't do this instead of, yeah. oh, I can manage this. I can do a five minute walk. That's easy. Yeah. We want people to go away with a sense of, oh, actually, I can do this, not Oh, well, maybe if I keep going forever, maybe I'll be able to do it. It's it comes back to that really getting to know your that's my catchphrase, getting mm. to know your client. But it's this is yeah. where I think we need to be getting to know the very inactive client a lot better. Yeah. Because as you so, say, Sarah, you, every movement counts. Absolutely. So you're saying exactly what I believe in. And as you know, I've just come back off holiday. I've been in Spain and I learned Spanish as a kid. And I've got to be honest, it's not as hot as I thought it was. But, you know, the inactive, um, you know, person, it's a bit like speaking a new language. <laughs> It's just start off with a few, you know, <laughs> pleasantries and a few things. How do you order this? How you cannot learn the whole language like in in such a short amount of time. It's little bit, little bit, little bit. And you know, then you know there might be a wonderful moment when a Spanish waiter says that I did well at Spanish. It did happen on my holidays. <laughs> but you know, it's because I tried a little bit, a little bit, got better and better and better. And that's the same with the clients. You know, if 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 I can speak another language to expect somebody else to be able to be fluent in it, you know, know it all, it's, it's just never going to happen. It's got to be small, inviting, you know, sort of things. And like you say, meeting the client where they actually are. You know? Oh, so important. And 
it you know if the client can only manage 15 minutes of activity then 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 that's what we do with them if they can only manage five that's what we do we need to get away from you know let's go to the gym for an hour let's do this long it's it's do what you can and it's mm-hmm. it, like you say you don't expect to sort of pick up a book and learn spanish overnight you expect to get it wrong as well but also yes, true yeah also it's we are an industry that does talk a lot of jargon. We have a lot of jargon, a lot of acronyms. And again, we need to bring it right back to just basic, simple terminology. Let's stop talking about CV and MSE and fit and reps and sets. And let's just bring it back. You're going to do this three times. You're going to do this 10 times. We're going to work on your heart now. We're going to work your lungs rather than using a lot of the jargon that we have, which we're so familiar with, we forget that other yes. people see it as a completely foreign language. So it's it, there's a role, I think, for education as well as providing activity and, and finding activity isn't there. And this is where, you know, for me, I, I want clients to be better educated so that they know why they're doing it. But also yeah. I want them to be asking their instructors, you know, okay, so well, what are your qualifications? What do you do with CPD? You know, what have you been learning recently? Because yeah. that shows the clients that there's a commitment on the part of the instructor to be learning, developing, providing a better service. This is where I think, you know, we definitely come from the same um, place in, in that ongoing professional development. And it could be as simple as reading research or an article, or it could be doing a whole brand new yeah. course, couldn't it? Yeah, I, and I think sometimes what happens is when somebody learns something new, they want to hit their clients with everything in one go. Again, I've learned something new, I'm so passionate about it and stuff like that. And again, it's just embedding it. It's just slow, slow, slow. And, you know, and, and speak loud and proud about what you're doing when, you know, when you're learning and being inspired and stuff. You, talking about that journey shows your clients that you truly care. I mean, we can't be doing... CPDs every minute of the day and researching every minute of the day. But I do know people who research for hours and I'm like, whoa, but they have that brain and that capacity for that. But we need to be ticking along with some ongoing education and being inspired so we remain relevant. Yes. It's really key. For me, there's something well, incredibly important about being relevant and truly feeling like we actually know what we're talking about. You know, there's, I mean, when I started off in the industry, I was expected to, you know, do this, do that, do that. And I was, in a way, there were moments where you're going, we'll just go and teach our class. And I'm like, ah, you know, and I found it a little bit difficult to, to sort of say no. But actually, you know, now it'd be different because first of all, I'd say, no or I'd say that's not in my lane or I'm not confident in that area but I think there's a lot of fitness professionals out there who don't feel confident in some of the areas Mm. and I want to say that's absolutely okay me as an educator you know and 30 years plus I still reach out to other professionals to ask advice I am still learning I'm still taking courses and I blinking love it. And I love not feeling like I know everything, but I want to soak up everything that I possibly can. I'm the same. I just, I love the fact that I can, I can le- keep learning. I love the fact that there's always something to learn. And it's, I was having a little mm-hmm. chuckle there when you were saying about teaching classes and things, because I remember I used to do quite a lot of conferences and conventions and um, classes and things like that. And I'd, I'd come along all full of enthusiasm to teach my class. And they'd be like, you've been on another damn course again, haven't you? <laughs> yes, yeah. I know. Stop it. I know. And it was yes. so funny because they'd be like, we like what we're doing. Don't change it. But it's, you know, I'm off to the ACSM conference in a couple of weeks time in in the States. It's the American College of Sports Medicine, for those of you who um, aren't familiar with it. And they actually have a very, very strong exercises medicine arm. And they've got a whole um, section this time on professionalizing the role of the exercise professional. And a lot of it is is to do with continuing, well, they call it continuing education credits, CECs, we call it CEDs, yeah. continuing professional development. But actually, again, it's something that I think is a really, really positive move, not just for us as 
as fitness professionals, but also for mm -hmm. our clients in that there's going to be a much more recognized pathway, a much more identifiable mm -hmm. professional network, um, which is yes. reassuring for clients. They know that people have been, you know, proper, properly trained in the first place, but also that they are accessing mm -hmm. the new knowledge they need. And like you say, it's not about researching everything. But it might be yeah. just, oh, that's interesting. There's been some new evidence about this or this. And this is where, mm -hmm. you know, get into the networks, get into the groups, because there'll be somebody researching it for you who can dis yes. disseminate it down. Yes. And this is, again, it's something that it, it might just be a very small thing. I know I was researching some things on barriers um, for people who are living with and beyond cancer, barriers to exercise. And one of the big things that came through mm -hmm. was a lack of knowledge about the benefits of exercise but also what to do and you know Absolutely. these are the sort of gaps that we sometimes forget to fill mm -hmm. is knowledge yes. is t talking to people about what they're going to gain from it why it's important not just what yeah. what they're going to do and how they're going to do it but why mm -hmm. because yeah. quite often when you understand why it becomes much more important and 100%. it's that communication isn't it and it's again that's, I think, a, a professional development that is definitely ongoing is those yeah. communication skills. And what you were saying before we, um, well, before you pressed record, is about how much research there is coming through. Mm. And, and that is definitely the case. And I think that's, you know, like I said, we do things like free webinars. So we'll we'll get educators on talking about a field because we, we really believe in providing that sort of information and um I, th I, th I think one of the things when you were saying that you know and I know you do a lot on barriers and you said you were doing some research on barriers what was springing to mind was it's actually listeners listening to this might think oh it's not for me or I don't need to or um I don't know whether I, I'll be able to understand it. I struggled with the anatomy and physiology on my, I just scraped through. And I just want to reach out to all of those people and recognize that we work with people in all stages, don't we? Yeah. And we have to recognize their barriers. And maybe it's a little reflection on ourselves and going, what are, I'm going to use the word excuses, although I hate that expression. What, what are the, what are the things that you're, you're maybe putting in front of your education? Is it, is it that you think oh, it's not for me or it's a bit expensive or whatever but actually if the why is really important to you that pull to truly a true passion to service your clients you are going to do that and what I would do is you know reach out to those people who maybe are feeling like oh I'm not so sure maybe do something like you know attend one of our free webinars you know a webinar you you're just an observer no one sees, yeah. no one sees you on screen you're not going to be tested you're not going to be called out you're not going to be quizzed our online educations as well we make them so very uh, sort of well they're all it's not only are these um people who are super informed at the front of their um of the field they're first and foremost educators yeah so they understand how they need to get the information across so they'll make it exciting they'll make it understandable they'll make it relatable and stuff and so i just kind of wanted to reach out to people who may be thinking oh not yet or it's a bit expensive or i don't really need to because i've learned everything that i need to or i'm a little bit worried I get it. I, I truly, truly get it. And I'm very privileged that I get to see all of this stuff going on. And I've been an educator. So I feel very keen. And I heard you say it, Sarah, about, you know, that you're very keen to keep on learning. And I recognize that some people aren't. And maybe there is a barrier for, there for them. But that doesn't mean that they can't you know, move through that and and start picking up some more education and finding something that really resonates with them. Because if you study something that really resonates with you and you think, yeah, that's that's going to be me, that's got my name written over it, you know, all over it, then you, you're going to really want to take it on board. You know, it's not, you have to sit there and do every subject that the teacher said, like at school, this is truly, you get to choose what you want to be a specialist in or be, you know, like you said earlier about, you know, you guys are going to be recording something on pelvic floor. You know, there are so many people that need 
that need your help and your support who are that have no one that they're talking to this is these are things that you know sort of hi- hidden away and 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 it's so sad that so many of our clients are going through that but if you started to specialize that or you started talking openly about that they'll be like oh my god i can speak to this person this is something i've been keeping under wraps for years and you know there's a lot of shame and things like that but that's i'm just talking about pelvic floor but you know i'm perimenopausal going through that lovely journey you know and it's <laughs> and a lot of our clients and um, sorry our fitness professionals are recognizing that working with perimenopausal menopausal and postmenopausal client is something that they really really wanting to to do and there's a lot of call for out there and that's great but if that doesn't if that doesn't resonate with you, guess what? There is going to be something. Maybe you suddenly, you know, you one of your clients suddenly got Parkinson's, or somebody's had a stroke, or somebody's got kidney disease, or somebody's got a respiratory sort of issue and stuff. There's there's such a you know if we don't provide it, and I think we've got most courses, you know, that, then there's someone out there that has, and you just want to make sure that they really are up to date and they're great educators, and if ideally it's endorsed. Yeah. And it's but it's also, you know, it raises your standing within the the, the kind of allied professions. So physios, uh, medical professionals and things like that. If you've got this this record, this this knowledge, in, even if it's in the most specific area you can think of, then actually there's going to be someone out there who also specialises in that. But on a different thing. So it might be you work with people who've got balance issues as a result of a neurological condition. There'll be a neurophysio that you can work with and you'll you'll learn from each other. And this is something, you know, again, there's you know, there's a lot of medical healthcare professionals out there who want to work with fitness professionals, but they want to know that they're referring their clients into a safe pair of hands. So again, it might be that you think, I'd really like to work with people recovering from a hamstring injury. I'm just completely off the top of my head there'll be physios specializing in that um who will want to refer people on once they finish their physio and into a safe pair of hands so it might be a tiny little area that you find out about but it could be a whole new income stream for you but also there's going to be clients who will really benefit from that they're, they're seamlessly moving through their rehab um so you know don't think oh well i don't want to work with this or that's too specialist you're never too specialist and there is going to be training out there that is relevant for you like you say with you know perimenopause menopause postmenopause is a gr- massively growing field now not because there are suddenly more people going through it because there aren't but it's because we are starting to understand some of the impact and how activity and exercise and lifestyle can help t- with managing it so, like I say, a lot of these things have always been there, but it's our understanding of how we can help people that's changing and that's growing. And this is where that CPD comes in. You know, if, if you're working with a group of women, even if now, if you're out there as a fit pro working with a group of women in their mid-30s, they're going to start hitting peri- perimenopause. Why not start training in it now so that you can support them before they hit it? So think, you know, don't just think now, think ahead. It's it's such an important, career development is such an important part of it, of, of our role. And we need, we need high standards of training. We need that, that quality that we can then pass down to our clients and give them a really, really positive, beneficial experience, which is, Oh, it's just, I can say, it's something I feel so passionate about. And it's something Me that, too. you know, yeah. I'd, I'd love, I'd, I run training courses and I'd love to sort of say, right, yeah, you've passed, congratulations, goodbye. But I never do. I've got people 20 years later still contacting me for advice. Great. And that's great. Me, and that's perfect. Yeah. Isn't it? But that's yeah. part of being an educator is you're a mm-hmm. safe space for people to ask questions. So, Absolutely. You know, and that is, you know, for me, Anywhere that offers that kind of safe space to, to be able to ask questions, to be able to to find out more, um, is mm. is so valuable, isn't it? It's so important yeah. as well. Um, but Sarah, what you do as well is you are, you know, you haven't felt like I've got to the pinnacle of this and I don't need to go any further. You're curious. You're 
always upskilling, you know, your your remaining relevant and all of those things. And that's what I pride myself on as well. And anybody who's listening can be exactly that yeah. as well. It's just it's just as simple as, you know, accessing it. And to think that it's not out there for you, it really is. And I would, I'm more than happy for anyone to contact me at FitPro and say, you haven't got a course on this. Please, could you find out something on this? Or there's a subject matter. Because I, I guarantee we've either had it in the magazine or we've had it in the newsletter. Yeah. Or if we haven't, I would be so grateful to hear from people. And I'd be like, right, I will find the person and we will get that out. Because if one person, one of your listeners is curious in it, we can find that out. Believe me, there will be a multitude of other people that yeah. are interested in it. So, you know, that is my, um, what was I say, mission to any of your listeners. They can reach out and, yeah. and, and let me know if there's any subjects that they'd like us to cover. It pros do. I'll make sure that Teresa's links are there. But, you know, if there isn't a training in it, it might be because nobody's come forward with it. Um, and, yes. and why not you? But also, I think, think laterally as well. Don't think... What can I learn about this with, from a fitness perspective? I've done training in business strategy. I've done training in yeah. body language. I've done training in mm. social media. You know, yeah. there, are, there are lots of other things that will enhance mm. you as an instructor. Communication skills, um, you know, all those sorts of things. Don't think it's got to be specifically around fitness and physical activity. It could be something that's linked and that actually enhances your your overall skills rather than just sort of oh you know I can I can teach that better it might be something that just improves your business skills your your visibility your under yeah. being able to do that I was a body language one was really interesting um, and it really helped me oh it's absolutely yes. fascinating but it really yeah. helped me to start appreciating more than just oh if someone does this you know if someone crosses their arms they're bored you know actually there's so much more to it and it made me much mm -hmm. more aware of, of people's body language and how they were reacting so that I can then go, oh, right, they're, they're not comfortable with the idea of the gym. What else have I got to offer them? Sure. So I don't have to And let's be that. honest. And not honestly, Sarah, how many of the courses have you done have helped you in life? I mean, so many of the courses I've done, I'm like, it's helped me with this person, yeah. it's helped me with this communication, it's helped me here, 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 here. You know, it's not like what you, you know, learn in that short course or long course is just going to be within a, you know, fitness arena. It's going to leak out, you know, like you say, body language, communication skills, business, whatever. Or it's, it's, it's so fascinating. And we do have, you know, parts of that. We recognize that, you know, not everyone is necessarily great at the business side of things. So yeah. we have stuff to help them. And But I do feel there are people who choose courses that they really think they're naturally good at already. And I think that's great. But I'm also going to challenge your listeners to think about, are there things I could be better at? You know, so it might be, you know, social media, it might be business. Or, you know, I think it's a bit like when we have people coming to our sessions, they maybe have always been a cardio bunny but eventually you start to go okay let's go and have a little look at these weights over here you know and then they realize the benefits so I'm I'm kind of again another challenge to your to your listeners is is look at you know something that it may be that you wouldn't typically do yes. see if it resonates with you you know because it's it's it, it's all learning it's all development and actually it might be something like you say you know we get people who just come in and they do the cardio and their aerobics and all that sort of stuff and the idea of resistance machines and free weights scares scares them yes um we don't just say right no get in that gym start lifting weights we, we introduce it gradually we do it gradually so you know think i've always wanted to find out more about that i some of the sessions i'm going to at the assm honestly it, it they're fascinating some of them they're so specific and I'll, I know I'll be out of my depth but actually sure. do you know what I'm quite happy to be out of my depth because yeah. I'll meet people and there will be something that I take away from it even if it's I need to find out more about this but you know yeah. stretch we we don't we we learn but we learn best when we just stretch our comfort zone a little bit because Fine. then exactly. we start to really really absorb things and think oh I need to know more I need to that's that's above my head I need to find out yes. what that means and actually yeah. that 
putting yourself slightly out of your comfort zone is a really good thing, isn't it, when it comes to learning and education because it's Absolutely. pay attention. Yeah, but I heard you say out of depth, right? But out of depth, you have two choices. You sink or swim. Yeah. And swimming is movement, you know, sinking is definitely not. So, yeah. you know, being out of your depth is great because actually you suddenly, you know, you start, there's movement, like I say, you start to swim a little bit and you go, oh, hang on, I like it over here, I like it over there. So I think, like you say, a little bit out of our comfort zones. I mean, no true educator, in my opinion, should ever make anyone feel exposed or uncomfortable. I believe that you can be gently pushed or challenged, but feel safe and still remain curious. As soon as those you know, shutters close down, you're feeling uncomfortable, you won't learn. So any truly good educator understands, first and foremost, any learner should feel comfortable. So, and yeah. one of my one of my first ground rules on any course is there is no such thing as a silly question. Every Absolutely. question is valuable. And actually, they're usually the ones that are the most valuable. But also, they are. I get asked questions sometimes as the educator that I don't know the answer to. And I've learned sure. over the years that the best answer to that is I don't know the answer to that, but I will yeah. find out. And yes. that's, that's part of my best. I don't know everything. Nobody does. But if somebody asks me a question, I will find out. Or I'll find somebody who knows the answer, um, but then I'll listen to the answer as well. So this is where I think, you know, yeah, sometimes you feel a bit crikey, but you always learn and you just sometimes we learn most from the simplest things. And sometimes we learn least from the same sort of thing. We learn we learn the most from sometimes the simplest things, but we also learn the least sometimes mm -hmm. because we, we think we know it. So it's having that open mind, right. isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yes. So and curiosity. I yeah. think curiosity and an open mind will serve you very, very well yeah. in the fitness industry. Just because yeah. you've covered it before doesn't mean there's nothing new. Um, so that open yes. mind is so important with learning. You know? Yeah. And, and, and actually, actually when you it doesn't hurt to go back to the basics and refresh. It helps, right? It helps you, you know, build on from that. And remind yourself how far you've come. Not a bad thing, right? <laughs> Especially if you're as long into the career as you and I are. Yeah, it is. So, you know, there's, and you forget stuff as well. You of course forget, you do. You forget yes. stuff. If you're not using it all the yeah. time, you do forget it. Um, on yes. that note, before we forget anything else, um, thank you so much for joining me today. Where can people find you if they want to find you? I will put proper links up, but where, just tell everybody where they can find you. Okay, well, our first of all, you can find us at fitpro.com. All our social media handles are there. We're on all the social media platforms, so check us out there. Uh, personally, me, I'm just on social media as Teresa Wheatley, um, and I'd love to give uh, people my email address so they can contact me directly at FitPro if they have, it, you know, if they just want to reach out or if they have any questions for us or they need any support in it. That is Teresa.w at fitpro.com. And the way you spell my Teresa is T E R E S A, and that's dot W at fitpro.com. Um, if you're the sort of person, the listeners listening in, if you're the sort of person that just wants to take a little peek, you know, follow us on social media for a little while, just get a feel for us. That's absolutely fine. Um, we just love to have you as part of the community whenever you are ready. And we will, inv we will, you know, uh, have you with open arms and uh, yeah we're a lovely community and very very supportive and Sarah it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about something that I am incredibly passionate about and I just want to personally say a thank you to anybody who's taken the time to listen to you and I musing about the things that are important to us so Sarah thank you. Well thank you and again if anybody's got an idea out there for some cpd or training or a webinar that they're really passionate about and they can't seem to find or that they they want to deliver then let Teresa know because who knows you could be you could be delivering a webinar for fit pro absolutely yeah. i love that idea yes thank you sarah thank you very much Teresa. you've been listening to me sarah belitho and my guest Teresa wheatley from fit pro on creating active lives we will see you soon thank you Thank you for listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belifto, and my guests. Join me each week for more on how to create and sustain everyday activity and follow me online at Fitness Career Mentor or Fab Newless. 
if you're interested in career development and more on creating active lifestyles.